Hi, I'm Chris Garcia of Stanford University School of Medicine and Howard Hughes Medical Institute. My lab is interested in receptors and transmembrane signaling and how receptors signal in response to ligand engagement. Now, one of the most compelling questions in receptor biology is whether a single transmembrane receptor is able to be induced to deliver instructive signals by different secreted ligands. And one of the systems in nature which seems to encapsulate these functions are the type 1 interferons, which have a range of antiproliferative, antiviral, and immune modulatory properties. So today we're going to tell you about a series of studies we've done to investigate the basis of differential signaling by type 1 interferons. Interferons have been hailed as magic bullets in the past due to these functional properties, and a great deal of hope has been invested in them for treatment of viral diseases and cancer. However, while they are used in the clinic for a broad range of diseases, their overall effectiveness has not been what was originally hoped for. As it turns out, their actions are extremely biologically complex, and there are also 16 type 1 interferons that have non-redundant functional properties. What makes this non-redundant activity intriguing to structural biologists like us is that the actions of interferons are mediated by a single pair of receptors, IFNAR1 and IFNAR2. So we wondered, are the structural differences in the manner by which the ligands engage the receptors responsible for the differential activities, or are there other explanations? And perhaps if we could discern the basis of differential signaling in the interferon system, we could utilize this mechanism synthetically to manipulate or tune receptor signaling in other systems. Interferons signal through engagement of the two receptors, IFNAR1 and IFNAR2, to form a heterodimer which results in transphosphorylation by the JAK and TIC kinases, ultimately resulting in activated stats translocating to the nucleus and activating transcription. My name is Christoph Thomas. I'm a postdoc in Chris Garcia's lab, and I came here because I'm interested in transmembrane receptors. I'd like to introduce you to the structural insights of our paper, which formed the starting point for the biophysical and cellular experiments. Using X-ray crystallography, I was able to determine the structures of two extracellular receptor ligand complexes, one containing interferon alpha mutant and the other containing interferon omega. These two interferons have distinct physiological activities. The membrane proximal domain of IFNA1 is not involved in ligand binding and was not visible in our structures. The architecture of the heterotrimeric complexes is unique among cytokine receptors. Particularly striking is the unprecedented binding mode of IFNA1, which contacts the ligand with all three internal subdomains. In contrast to the IFNA2 interface, binding energy in the IFNA1 interface is distributed over a larger number of interactions with relatively low individual contributions. Ligand recognition by IFNA1 appears to be optimized for functional plasticity rather than for high affinity binding. When we superimposed both ternary complexes, we were surprised to see that they had very similar overall architectures despite the different physiological activities. This suggests that the different activities are not due to different receptor ligand architectures. The functional differences are rather mediated by specific interface chemistries that lead to different ternary complex stabilities. In addition to the ternary complexes, I was able to determine the structure of uncomplexed IFNA1. Superimposing uncomplexed IFNA1 with IFNA1 of the ternary complexes revealed another striking feature of the interferon receptor. The ligand induces a conformational change in IFNA1, which is required to establish the full spectrum of ligand interactions and to form a stable complex in which downstream signaling can be instigated. The conformational change has also been observed by FRET measurements, and it appears to be an important regulatory mechanism for ligand discrimination and signal initiation. My name is Gideon Schreiber from the Weizmann Institute of Science, visiting Chris Garcia. For the last 15 years, I've been interested in the question of how similar interferons binding to the same two surface receptors can provide a different signal. For me, these new structures I dream come true. To provide a functional perspective to the newly solved structures, we investigated the effect of mutant interferon and subtypes on interferon signaling. No, that the affinity of interferon to IFNR1 is about 1,000-fold lower than to IFNR2. In addition to the wild-type interferon alpha-2 and omega, we designed two mutant interferons, one with tighter binding affinity to IFNR1 and the other with tighter binding affinity to IFNR2. We found 
the tighter binding interferons result in increased receptor internalization. However, start activation was quite similar between the interferons. Next, we measured interferon-induced gene activations. The EC50 for PKR, which is a key antiviral agent, is about 100-fold lower than that determined for the chemokine CXCL11 that is associated with the antiproliferative effect of interferon. The complexity of signaling results in differential biological responses. While antiviral activity is similar for the four interferons evaluated, antiproliferative potency scales with receptor binding affinity. Now that we have a better understanding of the differential basis of interferon signaling, the future plans by my lab and our collaborators' laboratories is to ask whether we can recapitulate this mechanism synthetically to design interferon molecules with even more diverse signaling properties and potentially improved therapeutic efficacy. Thank you for watching today and a special thanks to all of those investigators who participated in this team to explore the mechanistic basis of type 1 interferon receptor signaling.